welcome. So today we are going to be reading a book called Up in the Leaves. My name is Miss Winokur and I am from 21st Century in Pasco and I teach at Marie Curie and so we are going to be reading Up in the Leaves, the story of the Central Park Tree Houses by Shira Boss, illustrated by Jamie Kristoff. So our objectives today are going to be learn what a nonfiction book is and what is an onomatopoeia. We will also have some vocabulary words that we will be going over so that you know what those words mean as we're reading. So, a nonfiction book, and you know what? You probably already know it. Go ahead and say it. I'll give you a couple seconds. What is a nonfiction book? You also might even be reading our, our text on our screen. So, a nonfiction book is a book that is information that is true. So, what's really interesting is this is a picture book, as you can see. We know that nonfiction books have real pictures in them, but this book isn't told in a nonfiction form. So this is really the true story of how Central Park, which is in New York, got tree houses. So we're going to learn about our main character, Bob, and what happened and how the story of the Central Park tree houses came about. So this makes this book, even though it's in pictures, drawn, this is a nonfiction book because this is about real information. Now, our vocabulary words. You're going to see some words in here that you might not know the definition to, but we are going to go over them so you know. So our first word is scampered. Can you guys repeat after me and say scampered? Again, scampered. So that is basically when you run with light steps. So I know when I run, I run like really hard, but scampered actually helps with running not as hard on your feet, you have light steps. So you're running like lightly. Whir, can you say whir? So I want you to think of an animal that might make a low continuous sound. Maybe like a frog when it goes ribbit, ribbit. Very, very, very low, but you can hear it over and over and over again. So when you whir, or when a machine whirs, or an animal whirs, or maybe your little sibling makes sounds that's very low, the sound is low, but it's continuous, mean, meaning it's constantly happening. The next word is pelted. I want you to say that with me, pelted, pelted. So I'm not sure if you guys play video games, but you might throw an object to get through a trap or something. So when you're throwing something, keep on throwing it or repeatedly hurling something, that means throwing something at someone or something. So for example, when you are playing with the balloon, water balloons, you're gonna get pelted by water balloons because people are trying to get you wet. So pelted is repeatedly throwing something or hurling something at someone or something. Now, I don't want you to go ahead and start pelting your siblings, but for example, maybe if you guys have a balloon water balloon toss or water balloon fight, you're repeatedly hurling balloons at each other. So the next word is a canopy. Can you guys say canopy? So that's a cover. So when you think of when you're in the sun and you have a nice thing over you that kind of looks like a tent, but it doesn't really have anything around it. It's just the top. That's called a canopy. It's a, it's a very, very, very tall cover, but usually you're shaded by it. So like trees provide you cover. All right. The next thing we're going to talk about is an arborist. Can you say arborist? So that basically is a tree surgeon, which means that this person or these people or this company is going to cut down trees. So we're going to learn about Bob and there is an arborist in here. So pay attention. All right, and then our main guy. We're gonna learn about onomatopoeias. Who's heard of an onomatopoeia? I want you to think to yourself, have you heard of this before? So I want you to think if you've ever heard boom, crash, sizzle. Have you guys ever heard of those words as you're reading a book? Well, the formation of a word from a sound associated with what is named. So for example, when you say boom or or crash. 
those are all onomatopoeias because the sound is the onomatopoeia. It adds, like when you're going knock, knock, when you write knock, knock in a story, that's an onomatopoeia because the formation of the word is actually a sound. So when I say knock, that actually creates a sound. So the words that are formated to make a sound like boom, pop, sizzle, knock, those are all onomatopoeias. So I want you to pause this video because we're going to read and I want you to create a list of onomatopoeias that we're going to write down and then we'll review them as we read. All right, let's get started. So today we're going to be reading a story called Up in the Leaves, the true story of the Central Park tree houses. So remember, as we're reading, we're looking for onomatopoeias. I just want to make sure you can see the pictures as I'm reading. Bob lived in the big city. The city was very crowded. It was crowded with buildings stacked side by side. It was crowded with strangers packed into trains. It was crowded with trucks honking their horns. Bob didn't like all the rushing around. The eyes of so many people, all those feet on the ground. He climbed up lampposts, he snuck onto buildings' roofs, he scaled the walls of the castle in the park. At school, the hallways were narrow, the ceilings were low, the desks were cramped. The bell rang and Bob dashed to Central Park. The park was cool, green, calm. People walked slowly or sat on the ground. Trees waved their branches in the air, inviting them to come up. He lifted himself onto a tree limb. He pulled up another and then to the next. The bark made a path. The leaves made a hideaway. Up and down, he explored the trees, the fluffy pink cherry tree, the sticky pokey pine. He slipped through the door of the wide beach. He stepped up the staircase of a tall oak. Each tree had its own world, every limb an adventure. He could see the buildings and the people down below so small, but nobody could see him. Then this was his own secret spot. He decided to stay. Bob scavenged wood and rope from the dumpsters. He hammered. So what word would make this? Um, it would be knock or a hammer makes a tap, tap, tap sound. So let's write that down. That's our first onomatopoeia. Tap, tap. Whoosh, 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 he sawed. Oop, there's another onomatopoeia. And then I'm going to read the rest of this because there's another one. Loop, 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 he nodded. So remember, onomatopoeias are words that are sounds. So we have whoosh and loop. Every day after school, Bob's treehouse was waiting. He hugged the tree's trunk and scampered up straight up. The city... Roar, clang, bang, fell away. Did you guys hear any onomatopoeias? Oh, well, let's read that sen last sentence again. The city, roar, clang, bang. So, roar, loud. Roar doesn't necessarily mean like a lion goes roar, but when you have a group of people and you can just hear a loud roar, like everybody's just loud, talking, looking at objects, and then clang, you guys know what clang sing, and bang. So write that, let's write that down. Roar, clang, bang. Wow, we have a lot of onomatopoeia so far. He read the books in the harsh and shard peanuts with the squirrels. He didn't shard peanuts, he shared peanuts with the squirrels. He listened to the whir of the dragonfly the creaking of the word, wood and the flapping of the birds. So when it says the whir of the dragonfly, that's when the dragonfly is flying. The whir sound comes from the wings. Remember, it's a long, 
soft sound. One day his treehouse was gone. The squirrels had their nests, the bird had their roots, but the little boy no longer had the place of his own. Bob started all over, tap tap, whoosh whoosh, loop loop. Again, we already have those onomatopoeias, but do you see how the sound is written as a word? Tap, whoosh, loop. His new tree house was even bigger and even better hidden. When rain pelted down and wind bent the branches, Bob's tree house rocked and swayed. He was a sailor on a ship at sea. Was he really a sailor on the ship at sea? No. So authors use figurative language, like a figure of speech. When you think of, oh, it's raining cats and dogs. Is it really raining cats and dogs? No, but it would be raining really hard. So when he says the treehouse rocked and swayed, what do you think is causing that to rock and sway? When you think of the wind, we have a pretty bad wind here in Pasco. So the wind's going back and forth. And so it's rocking his treehouse because the tree is swaying and rock, rocking. And so it's kind of like he's the sailor of a ship because when you're on a ship, you rock and sway. But fall came and the leaves fell. The tree house was no longer a secret. Again, it was taken away. He no longer had the ship in the sky. So I want you to think what's happening to his tree house. Who's doing that? There was nothing to do except try again. Up went a platform, up went the walls, up went the milk crib for tables and chairs. He let down a rope and went up with some friends. Bob stayed after sunset and mapped twinkling stars. He even saw planets. He became an astronaut navigating the cosmos. Cosmos is the outer space. The seasons went on and so did the treehouse. Each one was taken down, but Bob kept building. Bob's mother was worried. You'll be grown up soon. You can't stay up in the trees. She wanted him to work like everyone else. But that wasn't for him. Shoulder to shoulder, downtown. The traffic, the concrete, the air thick with smog. Instead, he built bigger and the biggest tree house of all. Five levels and a bridge. Bob was proud. Look at that. There's the bridge. And then here's the different levels. He loved drifting to sleep, snuggled up in the canopy of leaves. Remember, that was high up. It's a, it's a big high space. One morning, Bob woke up and heard voices from below. We know you're up there, they yelled. Come down. Oop, I think we're going to figure out who is taking down these tree houses. Remember, this is a true story, so this really did happen. Maybe Bob specifically might have not been the person who built the tree houses, but these are the sto this is the story of how they became about. So somebody was building these tree houses over and over and over again. But I'm sure there's an author's note so we can read what really happened. Authors usually put notes when they were inspired by something. And this was inspired by the Central Park tree houses. He sadly descended like a fluttering leaf. His adventure was over. He stuck on the ground. But then something lucky. The man in charge of the park watched Bob come down. He climbed like a squirrel, sure-footed and at ease. Come work in the park, the man said to Rob, and take care of the trees. A job in the trees? I would love to work here, Bob said. So do you guys remember one of our vocabulary words, the arborist? So that's, that's how... He becomes an arborist. Every day, Bob walked to work in the park. With new ropes and a saddle, he could climb up in the tree, even the biggest. He swung all over branches up and across from limb to limb. He snipped and he sawed, and he kept the trees healthy. He stuck to his promise not to build any more tree houses in the park. But sometimes at night, he slipped out of bed and walked softly through the city back to his trees. So, interestingly enough, Bob is really the person who built the tree houses in Central Park. So, instead of an author's message, we have an epilogue. So, that's going to give us some background information of how the story was inspired. 
So Bob Redman built 12 tree houses in New York City Central Park from the time he was 13 until he was 21. His friends helped salvage building materials and construct hideaways. He crafted each tree house to have a special view, a balcony overlooking the true canopy or leafy window framing the city skyline. He named them after the stars. Studying the night sky was one of his favorite things to do in these magical tree houses. Now Bob lives in an apartment near the park. Trees cover the roof and it has skylights so he can gaze at the moon and stars. Still an arborist, remember an arborist is a tree surgeon. Bob takes care of all the trees all over the city. He escapes high into the branches just like when he built the tree houses. I went straight up, he says, the higher the better. So only birds and squirrels can, could go higher. So I want you to look. Hold on, I'm trying to hold the book. Move it this way. Do you see? That's a picture of Bob in a tree. And then that's it. But remember, authors use onomatopoeias to create sound effects in their writing. So I wrote down, these are the ones I wrote down. We have tap, whoosh, loop, roar, clang, and bang. I want you that to read a book or the next time you read a book, either fiction or nonfiction, because remember, this is a nonfiction book. This is based on something that really did happen and is true. So I'm sure the author had to interview Bob because Bob is really the person who made all the tree houses in Central Park. But remember, when you're reading, try to find an onomatopoeia in a fiction book or a nonfiction book. Now, the nonfiction book, you might actually have to read one that is a picture book just like this, that has pictures in it, that is a story, but it's nonfiction because this is true. These events that really did happen in this book are true. But then you also might have another book that, maybe another book we've read, you can look. So we've read, let's see, The Great K-Pock Tree, we've read Potato Pants, we've read, man, I want you to go on YouTube on our channel and see if you can find any more. But try to see if you can find some onomatopoeias and let me know. So you can comment below. You can send a class dojo message, but let me know. Have you found any onomatopoeias or any nonfiction picture books like this one? Hopefully you, hopefully you do find some. And maybe the next time we read a book, we will find some more onomatopoeias or read a nonfiction text. But thank you so much for joining us, and I hope you enjoyed our version of Up in the Leaves, the true story of Central Park Tree Houses.